This is part 55 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss authorization in Blazor, specifically how to show and hide UI elements depending on the authentication state of the user. Authentication is the process of identifying who the user is. Authorization is the process of identifying what the user can and cannot do. For example, if the logged in user is an administrator, he may be able to create, read, update and delete orders, whereas a normal user may only view orders but not create, update or delete orders. Access is typically granted or denied based on whether a user is authenticated, that is logged in, a user is in a role, a user has a claim or a specific policy is satisfied. We discussed all these concepts that is authorization using roles, claims and policies in detail in ASP.NET Core tutorial for beginners course. We use roles, claims and policies the same way in ASP.NET Core MVC apps, Razor Pages and Blazor. If you're new to these concepts, please check out our videos starting at part 77 from our ASP.NET Core tutorial. In Blazor, we use Authorize View component to show or hide UI elements depending on whether the user is authorized to see it. In this example, Authorize View component is used in its simplest form without any parameters, that is, roles or policies, so it only checks if the user is authenticated. If the user is authenticated, then the content in Authorized component is displayed, otherwise, the content in Not Authorized component is displayed. At the moment, irrespective of whether we are logged in or not, we display all these navigation links on the left. We don't want that. We only want to display this one login link if the user is not already logged in. And if the user is logged in, hide the login link and then display the rest of the navigation menu items. Let's see how to achieve this using the authorized view component. Let's wrap all these navigation list items with authorized view component. The only link that must be displayed when the user is not logged in is this login link. So let's cut it from here. Include not authorized component and then place the login link within that. The rest of the links must be displayed only when the user is logged in. So let's cut all these links. Include authorized component and then paste the links within this. Save our changes and take a look at the browser. We have an exception. Authorization requires a cascading parameter of type task of authentication state. Consider using cascading authentication state to supply this. The error message is pretty good. It clearly tells us what needs to be done. We must provide authentication state to our Blazor application. If you're new to cascading parameters and values, we discuss them in detail in part 48 of this video series. So basically, to fix this exception, we have to supply authentication state to our Blazor application. And we do that by wrapping the router component with cascading authentication state component. The router component is in app.razor file. So let's open that. Save our changes and take a look at the browser. There we go. We are not logged in. So we see just the login link. Let's log in. The login link disappeared and we see the rest of the links. Let's log out. At the moment, we are using authorized view component in its simplest form without any parameters, that is rules or policies. So the authorized view component only checks if the user is authenticated to grant or deny access. Just like ASP.NET Core MVC and Razor Pages apps, Blazor also supports both policy-based and role-based authorization. For role-based authorization, use the roles parameter and for policy-based authorization, use the policy parameter. This authorized view component also exposes a context variable. Notice from the IntelliSense, the variable type 
is authentication state. As the name implies, we can use this variable to access the authenticated user information. Next to this logout link, let's display the logged in username. There we go. Next to the logout link, we see the logged in username prajim at prajimtech.com. Our navigation menu is very narrow. So the formatting is a bit out of place. So I'm going to actually remove this piece of code, but you get the idea. Blazor has a built-in service called Authentication State Provider Service. This service obtains authentication state data from ASP.NET Core's HTTP context dot user object. So this is how authentication state integrates with existing ASP.NET Core authentication mechanisms. It is this service that is used by both these Blazor components, authorized view and cascading authentication state. So where needed, use these components and not the authentication state provider service directly. The problem if we use this authentication state provider service directly is that the component isn't notified automatically if the underlying authentication state data changes. That's why we use the components instead of the service directly. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.